Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Maggie. I'm a non-traditional pre-med student and I'm hoping to start medical school next year in 2021. So far I've had seven interview invites, which is super exciting. My first virtual interview for medical school was a few days ago. We talked to the students and they seemed so happy and nice and it was just a fun day and I think I'm just super elated because regardless of how I did, I did my best and just the thought of getting into medical school next year just has me so excited. I can't even put it into words. So in this video, we're going to go over what to expect for your interview day, how to prepare, how to set up your space, and finally what to wear. So let's start with what to expect. So out of the seven interview invites that I've gotten so far, it's about a 50-50 split of whether it's a full day from 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. or whether it only lasts about two and a half hours. For the interview days that last a full day, usually the day is spent learning more about the school, listening to various people talk, talking with the current students of that school, plus your interviews. The interview days that are shorter, only two and a half hours, that's usually mainly interviewing and maybe talking with current students. And then they have you learn more about the school in a list of videos that they have you watch through their portal first before your interview day. I also have a group activity interview day scheduled. And right now I don't have the details on that, so I don't know how long it will be, but I'm guessing it'll be at max one to two hours. So that's another type of interview that I've had this morning. Another thing that's very important to expect is technological difficulties. So regardless of how much time that you have prepped your camera, chosen what settings you want on Zoom, chosen what you wanna use for audio and all those things, just know that there's probably still gonna be technical difficulties, whether it's on your end or whether it's the interviewer. For my interview that I had, I had multiple MMI stations plus a traditional interview and half of the MMI stations had technological difficulties, whether it was from me or from them. So the technological difficulties that came up on my side were just because of how they set up their platform. It was technically through Zoom, but then once we started our interviews, we went to a portal and then went through Zoom on there, if that makes sense. I don't really know how to explain it, but basically each interview that I started, I had to go back through my Zoom settings and turn on my camera, then select the correct camera, then turn on my microphone, then select the correct microphone. For my first interview, I couldn't get my audio to work at all. So big tip, have your phone in arm's reach. This doesn't mean have it on your table so you're distracted every time you get a notification. I know that some people might think, oh, my phone just needs to be out of the room, not even close, so I don't have to worry about distractions. But in this case, some interviewers or the, some schools may tell the interviewers to call you if your audio isn't working. So I was really happy that I had it in arm's reach because I did consider putting it in another room, but I had it close just in case because I knew there may be some difficulties and what do you know on my very first station audio didn't work at all i'm pretty sure it's because last minute i tried to use my airpods because of course somebody decided to use a chainsaw in our neighborhood as my interviews were starting so that was very nice i don't know i think switching messed up the audio i figured it out like into the fourth interview so just expect that things are not going to go super smoothly maybe they will which is great but just expect that they won't you don't want to get so tripped up that you're going to have terrible interviews, especially if it's MMI and you have eight stations. Just imagine if every single interview station you were tripped up because something wasn't going right. Just expect it and roll with it because the interviewers are going to do the same. So another thing to expect is that you may want to write a lot of notes. I personally didn't think that I would want to write any notes at all because I'm just not usually a note taker for those type of situations. But I did put two pieces of paper and a pen near my computer and I ended up using every inch of that space. Seriously, I was so surprised that I wanted to write down so much stuff. A lot of the things that I wanted to write down was emails for every single person that talked because I was like, oh my gosh, I need to send everyone thank you emails. And I also wrote down names. I wrote down things that they talked about so I could mention it in my emails. And I didn't actually end up using all of this. I only ended up using three e names and emails and sending questions to the students that talked to us because I actually asked one of the students, I was like, um, they didn't give us any emails for the people who talked today and I can't find it on the website. So should I send thank you emails? And the person that responded to me was like, I didn't send thank you emails when I went and I got in and maybe I shouldn't use that. If you want to go ahead and ask the admissions questions or go to the admissions 
email and ask them what the email address is for each person, you could probably definitely get that and send thank you emails. But for me, I already had so much on my plate prepping for other interviews and work and everything else that, and he said that he didn't do it. So I probably should have just done it because I had all the info and I knew what I wanted to say, but you know, I didn't anyway. Write down, just plan that you're gonna write down a bunch of notes. So next we're gonna talk about how I prepared for my virtual interviews. And this is pretty similar to how I would prepare for any medical school interview. It's not very specific to virtual interviews, but I thought it was still important to go over just because this could still be somebody's first medical school interview, regardless of whether it's virtual. So I just wanted to touch on the topic. And first, obviously, I'm a big fan of Dr. Gray. I consider him basically my pre-med advisor because I'm out of college and my pre-med advisor from undergrad is wonderful and great and amazing, but there's not a lot of information that I can get from him about the pre-med process. So Dr. Gray is who I consider my pre-med advisor, even if he doesn't know me. <laughs> so one of the things I used to prepare, of course, was his book. He has a medical school interview book and I really liked it because it goes over all the question topics, categories, and examples plus the feedback that he gave to his students during mock interviews. So it was really good. I read it the weekend before my first interview and I was really happy that I did. So another thing that I did to prepare was mock interviews. And this is super important. Dr. Gray talks about it in his books. And I did a combination of free mock interviews, plus I paid the hefty price to go ahead and yeah, I paid a uh, admissions company. It, it hurts the bank, it really does. It was hard to swallow but it's worth it to me because honestly like this is my second time applying to medical school and i went in the interview is the last thing you have to do well before getting an acceptance so i was like this is worth it to me i looked into companies like that for helping me with primaries and secondaries but i couldn't really justify spending hundreds and thousands of dollars but for this being so close to an acceptance i was like okay I will do whatever it takes to be able to afford this, AKA charge it to my credit card. <laughs> and my mom was able to pay half. Anyway, mock interviews are really important. So for free resources, contact your undergrad institution, whether you're still going there or whether it's been four years since you've been there. It's been three years since I graduated from my undergrad institution and they were happy to give me a mock interview. I started with that, it was totally free and she gave me Great advice. My interviewer did know about the difference between traditional and MMI, so we practiced both types of questions. It was great and it was free. So the second thing that you can do for free is just ask your parents or ask your family members, friends, anybody, roommates. Go on Google and just search the most common medical school interview questions asked, get a long list, send it to all your friends and family and have them do a mock interview over Zoom so you can practice what settings you want, if you bought a camera or an external camera, just that's a chance to practice that and practice your interviews. So I would highly suggest doing that. Those are two free options where you can get a lot of good practice. In addition to reading Dr. Gray's book, which is $12. So for $12, you can get great examples from his book, some of his feedback from other students. Plus you can have a mock interview from your undergrad institution and you can ask friends and family. So that's a lot of practice that you can get for $12. And of course, if you have the resources to pay for a mock interview from an admissions company, then that is really great. I am really happy that I did it. Even though it's still a very hard pill for me to swallow, I paid $750 for three hours. That's $250 an hour for mock interviews, for practicing interviews. It's I, it's, I don't know, that's really expensive. Um, but if you have the resources, I made it work. If you can make it work, I personally think it's worth it because you're just, you're so close to getting acceptance. So if your parents will pay for it, if you can make it work, it's investing in your future. I think it's totally worth it. Another thing I did to prepare was spend a lot of time on a specific handful of questions. So after I got the basis of how to answer MMI questions and the ethical questions and all that from mock interviews and reading Dr. Gray's book, I wanted to focus a special amount of time on just a handful of the most, most common questions, I guess. And that's why you want to be a doctor because that's pretty important. And I guess it's not guaranteed to be asked, but, and I've only had two interviews so far, but <laughs> that was a question that I wanted to make sure I had an amazing answer to because I feel like it's very important you're trying to get into medical school to be a doctor. So you should be able to answer the question, why do you want to be a doctor? <laughs> I spent a lot of time on why do you want to be a doctor? Tell me about yourself because 
I also interviewed in 2017. That's the first thing that they asked me then. And it's a common interview question. So I wanted to be able to have a good story and tell them a good mix of things about my background and things like that without rambling and without, you know, ending it awkwardly. I just wanted to not be scripted, but to practice it. So tell me about yourself. Why do you want to be a doctor? What is something that you would like me to tell the admissions committee? Why should we accept you? And why do you want to go to this school? Why do you want to go to this school? Because you really need to have very good specific answers, not just general answers that you could say for any school. Specific programs, talk about the mission, specific things to that school. So those are the questions that I spent a good amount of time on and I'm really happy that I did. After my first interview, I was just ecstatic that I put a lot of time into practicing those questions because it made me feel kind of confident. I feel like those are really important questions to have a good answer to. And the rest, once you have good answers to that good handful of questions, the rest are pretty easy. You can kind of think of things on the spot. Another thing you could do is list out specific examples. So there's a lot of common medical questions. You don't have to practice every single one. That would probably be impossible. You can practice as many as you can, but then also just think of situations, uh, just think of situations for questions. So if you get asked about a conflict, have a, have two examples of a conflict ready. Even if you don't practice saying the answer, at least have two examples. So you don't have to sit there and think of, hmm, when was I in a conflict, you know? Just think of two conflicts that you have ready. Or what's a time when you worked well with others? Think of two times when you worked well with others. So if you don't have time to practice every single question, go through the list and at least just think of scenarios or think of examples that you can talk about. That would be really helpful. So let's move on to setting up for your virtual interview. This is definitely unique to virtual interviews because it's not something you would have to think about if you go to the school. But for example, the background. This background is actually pretty similar to what I had for my virtual interview. I purposely put those books in the background just in case they wanted to ask me, oh, you have books in the background. What are you reading right now? Or ask me about the picture behind my head of me jumping a horse because I rode horses all throughout high school and I could talk about it forever. So I purposely put those. Also, when we were on our Zoom meeting, I could see all the other interviewees. There's about 28 to 30 of us. And one person had a big picture frame with two numbers from like a marathon in the picture frame. So obviously he, he definitely put that there on purpose in case his interviewer asked him about the marathons that he ran or maybe their triathlons, who knows? I also watched a live mock interview that one of the admissions companies did on Facebook and that person had a guitar in his background. So, you know, if you ha do music, if you run marathons, whatever you do, if you jump horses, you know, if you read books, I don't know, put something cool in your background or don't. Either way, as long as it's not messy, as long as there's not underwear hanging on the side of your chair, as long as those things are covered, just make sure that it's clean. Nobody's going to interrupt you. Hopefully your dog doesn't bust in. Mine was able to stay out until the very end of the day. So things like that. So next thing to talk about is what camera to use. Most laptops already have a camera that you can use for your webcam, which is fine. I don't think the quality needs to be amazing, but if you do want to buy an external camera for your laptop, I personally got one and I'm happy I did. The most important thing is actually the lighting because when I first got my external camera, I was so disappointed. It looked absolutely terrible, but I was also sitting in a room that had one light and it was dark outside and it was just terrible lighting. Whereas when I actually did my interview, I sat in front of a window and of course it was bright. It was during the day. So the lighting was much better and the camera quality looked 10 times better. So this is true for my webcam on my laptop and the external camera. So make sure that you have good lighting. If there's no windows to sit in front of, see if you can put a lamp behind your computer so there's light on your face because lighting makes a big difference. But again, don't stress too much about it. You can use your laptop or you can get an external camera for about 40 to 50 bucks and either one's going to be fine in the end. Just have good lighting and have a nice background. You'll be fine. The only other thing to think about when setting up your space is the camera positioning. So make sure it's not so low that they can see up your nose. You want it to be about eye level or slightly higher. I'm using my phone right now for this video and I would say that the camera is pretty much eye level, maybe higher. And I think that's pretty good. That's what I used for my interview day on my laptop and my external camera. And this worked out great. So I'll show you what my camera has propped up on now and what I use to prop up my laptop for interview day. 
I have all these various boxes plus books, so use whatever you have. These are nice and flat, so I could just prop my laptop on top of that, and then I could take away or add as much as I needed to get the perfect height, and if I needed something skinny, I think I ended up using a planner. I used, I think, this one plus a planner, and that ended up being the perfect height for my laptop. So, so we covered setting up your space for your virtual interview day. Now we can talk about what to wear. And this one honestly is the same as what you would wear for a normal medical school interview with the exception that some schools may email you and tell you that it's okay to be less casual because I have gotten one of those emails. So look out for those, but unless you get that, same as a normal medical school interview. If you're a guy, wear a suit and tie. If you're a girl, wear a suit, nice blouse, pants, you don't have to wear pants because they might not see it, but you should still wear pants, honestly. I did stand up a couple times, um, so I think you should wear pants, but you don't have to. Either way, as long as what they see is what they would see in a normal medical school interview, then you're good to go. Nothing too flashy, just keep it simple and conservative. I'll show you what I wore for my interview day. So this is what I wore for my medical school interview in 2017 and my virtual interviews. This is a Calvin Klein suit. Um, but I did not spend that much. Actually, even though it's Calvin Klein, it was pretty affordable, relatively speaking. I think it's around 130 and I'll link a similar one in the description. I don't think I found the exact one, but it's Calvin Klein brand and I love it. It's a little bit stretchy, so it's incredibly comfortable and it's not that expensive because I feel like you can pay a lot of money for suit. So that's all I have for you guys. I really hope that this video helps. And if you want to read the blog post version of this video, it's on my website. It's lifebymaggie.com. You can go there and save this post for the future. Hopefully we don't have to do virtual interviews for much longer, but if you'd like to save it for the other tips or what to wear, go ahead and head to my blog. That'd be awesome. I'd love the support. And anyway, I'm just so happy you watched this. I hope you crush your interview. I'm sending you all the positive vibes for you to get accepted into medical school. Good luck. Thank you for watching. Bye.